reckon it's a bit like retro round, what we've seen this round, and uh, it's disappointing to say that for all the work we've done with protecting the head and all the issues we've got with past players, reconcussion uh, and head trauma and life-altering uh, situations they're in at the moment, that we're going to court in one shape or another, it's going to cost us millions of dollars. Nothing's changed. Absolutely nothing's changed. You've got Cosy Pickett there spearing in with, with genuine intent to hurt, and that gets two weeks. It should be three minimum, and then if he knocks a player out, it'll be six, seven or eight. You've got Buddy Franklin who goes past the football seeking contact with the head of an opponent who gets one week. It's not even a deterrent. One week, Buddy take a week off just to spell and reload and go again. This here, Shane McAdam sets himself, launches and takes a player out in the, in the most cruel and, uh, of fashion. And everyone says, oh, but it's a perfect hit. That's the old days. You know what? It is the old days. Those days are gone. Mm. We've changed so much in our game. And until we take this seriously from a punishment point of view, right now there is no deterrent. And I don't care what your matrix is. Oh, we can only upgrade here, intentional, and do this and do that, risk of causing injury. Well, the risk of causing injury is taking us to court. When will the penny drop for the, for the MRO or the AFL that we've got 200 past players suing the AFL because they cannot live their lives in a meaningful way uh, at 50 plus? Well, that's the clause, isn't it? That's the way they want to make it bigger, the risk of causing injury. Well, wh why don't they use it? Well... Why don't they, why don't yeah. they just take the head, head uh, knocks onto its own matrix? That's a little bit ran a little bit fluid and gives Michael Christian the ability the ability to, to actually say, you know what, under the matrix it's two, but we've got to take a stance and, and give it four because some of those hits are very savage and going into those bumps, they don't know what's coming out the other side. Yeah. Yeah, oh, I'm surprised with, with a couple of those bumps from, from particularly the younger boys. I mean, Bud, Bud's probably been doing that for, for a long time and, and uh, but those other I mean, we haven't seen acts like that for a while where the players have deliberately chosen to leave their feet and launch at someone. It was actually a bit of a shock. It was, it, it was, wasn't it? It, it was a real surprise. So he's a lucky boy that he's only got two weeks. I have to agree with, with you on this one. I mean, he, he's very lucky. But Buddy knows the rules. Yeah, I know. Like but one yeah. week for Buddy. Yeah. Oh, come on. Yeah. Do you want to talk about the descent that we saw yeah. today, what it cost? Well, I thought the uh, Saints were going to be the hard luck story with a couple of decisions. I just wonder if we can have a look at this and see what you think. So the player's pointing to the screen. Is that really descent? I mean, we, it does not a great look. I grant that it's not a great look. But I don't think they're really going after the umpire. They're frustrated, they're challenging. Hey, look, I'm telling you he didn't mark that. Hey, look, I'm telling you I got a hand to that. This is, this is really gentle. Oh, have a look at that. Bang, 50 minutes. The penalty is, is overs. It's two gifted goals. This team only scored seven. Yeah. So they got two from... You know, I'm not saying they wouldn't have kicked those goals. But, gee whiz, they were 20% chances and they were absolute gimmies mm. in the end. I think we have to look at that. Well, we went through it a bit at the start of last year, didn't we? And then they Can we look of... at it, do you think? Well, do you think it's 50 metres? It's a, I, what I'll give you is the penalty it doesn't fit the crime. Yep. But... So what's your answer then? Well, the, I think the, they, the players know the rules. That's, that's the rules at the moment. But if, as long as they set that standard, that's fine. But so that would have been explained in black and white that it's an easy one to say, well, that is descent. If you look up and point at the scoreboard, so the umpires are probably going yeah, to... I oh, know they're going to the letter of the law, but I agree. I'd love to see a bit more common sense. There's a lot said out there that yeah. if you wrote it down in black and white, wouldn't exactly. read real well, Joey. Oh, I agree. I so agree. I just think we've got to back off and have a look at that. Well, I was at the MCG today, and, um, I mean, Essendon, credit to them, but it was really poor by the Hawks. It, it was really disappointing. We know they're a young side and we know that it's going to be a, a long burn. But, gee, you, you want to be patient as a Hawthorne fan from what we saw today, what they dished up. Because this was a game, and, King, you talk about it, when you're playing like types, there are only so many winnable games when you're going to be a bottom four team. And they would have been expecting to perform much better than they did. But for Hawthorne today, their system was poor, their effort was really poor, and their execution was poor. And when you look at their, their pressure numbers, I mean, that was the worst pressure rating game from any team, even going back through last year, that we've seen. So oh, I think it's, it's going to be a, a real slow burn for the Hawks. I mean, they've gone from five wins, seven wins, eight wins. They're going to go backwards with wins this year. It's a long, long time to try and do this rebuild. Now, we've discussed whether Sam Mitchell's going to be the man to see it through, but, gee, they were really disappointing today. So um, that, that's probably my, my first the, crack. I haven't seen this game mm. yet. Were there any of the youngsters that you thought, you know what, you, you took a step forward today? Um, not really. Not really. There weren't too many shining lights. I mean, the, norm, the normal suspects on Ward was pretty good and a couple of the midfielders, but there wasn't too much to like. And we, uh, Sam Mitchell, he was really disappointed after the game. 
we just couldn't couldn't find a way to you know connect going forward. You know we were able to move the ball not too bad, but we just couldn't find anything going forward. And I mean our defence held up not too bad at different stages, but um, once it once it fell apart, it fell apart badly. And I think that was the most disappointing thing to come out of the game. We know in today's game, if you can't if you can't control the transition speed of the opposition, then you're going to really struggle to defend scores. And that's what happened. I still think today was, um, you know, a long way from what we expected as a as an internal group. I think we would have we would have expected to perform a lot better than we did today. Well, they've made the call. They've got to live with it now, don't they? They do. It's what yeah. they've done over the off season. So that'll be certainly something to watch. There'd be panic in Fremantle, I reckon. Panic. Oh, I think so. Oh, I think that they're playing that fake footy profile of not really trusting your back six to defend. And we talk about their back six. They've got a good back line. They're, they're sturdy, they're experienced, and there's a couple of youngsters down there that are going to be top liners anyway. So I don't know why... I don't know why Justin Longmuir doesn't trust that they'll be able to defend and play fast footy. Now, to take 136 marks is football of yesteryear. That is gone. If you've seen the football on Friday night, that's what you're looking at. If you want to contend, you've got to rely on the, the 18 on the field to, to flick the ball through the corridor, to go with speed, to go with power. Seven goals, not going to get it done. Absolutely not going to get it done. And to move the ball from defensive half uh, forward, they had 77 opportunities from their defensive half to kick two goals. Mm. Now, that, that's just... That's miles from the best teams. Extraordinary in the numbers, isn't Mile, it? Oh, yeah. They, they, got, they got confusion up forward. This Nathan Fife thing at full forward is not going to work. It's, really? it's not going to work. I mean, he's, a, he's an absolute superstar midfielder. He's a walk-up Hall of Famer. We love Nathan Fife, so don't, don't think this is a go at him at all. But he's not a forward. He, he took one mark today, nine disposals, and there came a time, a point in that game, where they had to say, you know what, let's just put him in the middle for five minutes or ten minutes and see if we can get something to spark. He didn't get that opportunity. No. I, I think they made an error today, and this is a loss that'll cost them big time at the end of the year. No doubt it's a bad loss. I think you've got to give the forwards a chance. As you mentioned, 136 marks, and they only took eight inside 50. It was an issue last year. They were 16 for marks inside 50. So, I mean, if you're doing that, you're not giving your forwards much of a chance to really, you know, get some space and some separation. So, there, they wasn't be moving the ball better. Telling moment when he had the shot for goal, he he's never been a great kick for goal. And that's, to me, the worry with it. You can change yeah. a lot of things, but it's hard to suddenly become a good shot for goal. Yeah, yeah, it is. And they are playing, I suppose, a different way to the majority of the teams that we've all been spoken about in the competition, but it's hard because it worked so well for them yeah. for big parts of last year. But, yeah, something, that's, that's, something that might be a reality but check but for even, the year. But that's, that, this, is, this is my discussion. So what worked last year, we, we know, is not, is, didn't work in the back end of the year, didn't work, didn't work in finals, and, it didn't, and we have only seen one round, but the teams that went with speed last year have gone again. Yeah. So if you want to play a different brand, well, I say good luck to you, but it's a big risk in 2023. How big a loss was it for the Dogs? Uh, I don't think it was disastrous by any stretch. If you guys think they're the mm. Premiership favourites, then it's, you know, it's, it's, not a, it's an obvious result. But um, we were interested to see how the tall mix would go forward of centre. And I've got to say, I don't know if there's enough nasty in them. Is there an, uh, Norton certainly has it. Yeah, he, he brings it in spades. He's a competitor. I just don't know with Rory Lobb. Has he got enough nasty that he's out of position that he can fight and scrap and bring that ball to ground? I don't know about Jamara. Is Jamara just a nice player? Is he, is he a guy that just wants to drift and, and get involved when, when, it's sort of, when he's on the move and on the lead? Or does he have an absolute clunk in him and the steel to take that contested mark where he's got full run at it? Because I look at what the Demons were able to do with them and they dropped off whenever they want. And then the, fight, the fight's just not there. Like, Rory Lobb, come back. Crash the pack. Here, crash the pack. It's nice. It's gentle. They had 50 inside 50s. So they went inside 50 50 times and they took only seven marks. The opposition took 12 intercept marks. So Lobb was targeted five times with no result. Norton 12 times. He took three marks inside 50. He was very good. Uh, and Jamara five times for, for two marks inside 50. But there's no, I need to see an edge from them. Yeah, Norton was the only one, wasn't he, that looked like launching. And, yeah. career, and I think the Bulldogs midfielders fell into the trap of knowing they had the tall forwards. Let's just bomb it in. And they were hacking the ball in there and making it really difficult. So they They've got to get that synergy and connection right. But that's the watch. I want to see them play more like the coach coaches. 
Right. With an edge. Yeah. As soon as they play with that edge, they'll be a good side. But if they want to play nice footy, yeah. they'll be also ranked. That's more the point, because I think there's a the bit of the myth. They've got the four tall forwards, but they're never on the field at once. There's never four in the forward line. There's always one on the bench, one in the ruck, and it's they play the three tall. It's still a lot, though, isn't it? Three talls is pretty common. We've seen a lot of premiership teams play yeah, with three talls. Mostly that's not three talls all day. Yeah. But um, they get, well, they're going to try. I'm not worried who the three are. No, exactly. They've just got to yeah. bring in. I mean, yeah. Sam Darcy's a young kid. We're not putting him yeah. even in the discussion. But they've, they've got to get angrier with, with how they attack the ball.